I bet you hate reading books. How do I know that? Let me tell you a story, okay? This is a story of two different people, okay? Let's call them person A and person B. Both of these people really enjoy self-improvement. They want to gain success in their business, in the gym, and in life in general, right? And they are both very honest people as well. And that matters, so remember that fact. Let's look at person A first of all, right? Person A, what he cares about is what other people think about him, right? So he cares, okay, I need to look good like in this way and that way. But here's how he approaches reading books. He wants to improve, so he buys a bunch of books, like a hundred books, loads of books, right? And he starts reading. But it is so hard, it's so boring, it's such a drag for him to do, and he hates it. You see, most of the content of the books he's reading is not even relevant to him. So he just feels like he's reading like nothing. He's just like, why am I reading this? He's thinking that all the time. But even when there's something relevant to him, he kind of skims past it because he's got to up the numbers of the books he's reading. Oh, I've, I'm, I'm, I'm on book 23 this year. I've got to get to 24, 25. I've got to be able to tell people, oh guys, look how many books I'm reading. He doesn't take action on the lessons that he's learning in his books because he spends all of his time reading. And so for person A, reading equals suffering, right? But he has to keep going because that number, that number, I need to show people how many books I've read. And so one year later, he comes out of his home and he says to his guys, his friends, he says, look guys, I've read 300 books this year. And so you look at him, you look at him up and down and you're thinking, this guy's broke. He's skinny, he looks horrible and he smells of weed. This guy clearly hasn't achieved any of the goals that he set out to achieve at the beginning of the year. So now let's look at person B. Okay, person B doesn't really care so much about what people think of him. He's focused on himself and improving himself. They have similar goals, remember, but person B's story is very different. Person B is super careful about the books he's reading. He doesn't like wasting his time at all. So a typical scenario might look like this. So person B, he might notice someone he respects, maybe a friend, maybe a father figure, talking about a book and the value that it has. So it piques his interest. He does a bit more research. He looks at some podcasts where the author is a guest on that podcast and the author talks about what the book is about and how people can learn from it. And he makes a decision. Is this relevant to me or is it not? So he decides that it is and he goes and buys the book, right? The first thing he does is that he looks at the contents page. He sees that there's a foreword written by someone who isn't the author. So it's not particularly relevant, but he skims through it for 30 seconds and decides that it's worth skipping. Then he looks at the first chapter because he knows that the first chapter is the most important part of the book. It introduces the book and it tells you what the book's gonna be about. So he reads through that chapter and then he decides whether the whole book is worth reading or not. And if he does decide it's worth reading, he looks at the contents again. He looks at the chapter titles and he looks at titles that might interest him and titles that definitely aren't interesting to him at all. So he picks a chapter that he would like to read and he reads through it. And if he decides that at some point it's not worth his time to finish the chapter, he'll skip the chapter. If he finds great value in it, he finds really good interest in it, then he will finish that chapter. And there'll be moments in the middle of each chapter where he's like, oh, that is a wonderful, great idea. I need to write that down somewhere. So he gets out his journal, he writes it down, and he creates an action plan in his life and implements it immediately. He might leave his book on the table and go outside and just do something, at least one thing, to implement that idea in his life right now. So that process continues until he finishes that book. It might only be one chapter that he gets from the book and decides that that's all the value I'm gonna get from this book. So, okay, I'm, just, I'm finished with it. He might stick with one book for an entire month, maybe even two months. And he might even switch between books at different times in his life. And so we come back to person B one year later. And person B has read 20 books, right? And I say read because he might not have read them all the way through completely, chapter to chapter and cover to cover, but he has gained the value he has needed from each book. But now you look at this guy up and down and you're thinking, this guy looks jacked. This guy is healthy as hell. He has the social skills of a world-class speaker and his business has more than tripled. This guy's a beast, right? And he looks back on the point he was a year ago and he's thinking, it's insane how much I have grown until today. So I'll ask you this, who is the person that you would like to be? Person A or person B? Clearly, we want to be like person B. But let me ask you this, who do you relate to more, right? Because unfortunately, for some of us, we relate really well to person A. We read everything and yet we learn nothing. And this reminds me of a quote from the movie Fight Club, which I didn't really understand until very recently, right? I was trying to work this out. Brad Pitt's character, right? They're in the bus and he turns to the main character and says this. 
self-improvement is mental masturbation, right? And I was like, what does that mean? Like what? Surely self-improvement is a good thing until something switched in my brain. You see, I used to be somewhat like person A, right? I was doing person A things, just kind of watching videos all day, just not really implementing what I've learned. And it finally clicked in my brain. I was like, oh, okay, that's what it means. You see, when we endlessly scroll through self-improvement content, just YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, endlessly scrolling, what are you actually doing? Are these things actually helping you in your life? If you're constantly just watching there's no time for you to take action on those lessons in your life. It might feel productive, but it doesn't do you any benefit in your life. Like for example, I knew someone who was quite addicted to Instagram, right? And I told this person, I was like, you know, I think you'd be better off deleting Instagram, to be honest with you. And she came back and said to me, but, oh, it's it's it inspires me like with, with the gym and, and stuff like that. You are coping, right? You realize that, right? She's making excuses up just so that she can continue doing this mindless activity and feel productive when she's not actually being productive. And I'm not saying that self-improvement is a bad thing. I mean, like, look at my entire channel, like scroll through the videos on the side, like all my stuff is self-improvement. But there is a point where you have to get up off your chair and get on with your life and apply those lessons. And so let me tell you a story about how I did this recently as well. I came across a guy called Robert Glover, right? I saw a podcast with him on Chris Williamson's podcast. It's called Modern Wisdom. And what I learned from this podcast was really only just one or two things. The rest of the podcast, I listened in double time. It was overall good. I liked, it was very interesting to hear the guy speak. I like his personality and everything, but it was only one or two things that I really learned from the entire podcast. But I was interested. I wanted to dive deeper and see if I could learn a bit more from this guy. So I did a bit more research. I found some other podcasts where he was a guest on that podcast. And thankfully, on a lot of podcasts, people split up the video into chapter segments and they title the chapter by what he's talking about in that chapter, right? And so in these podcasts, I was able to skip through to the part where I wanted to hear what he had to say. He was talking about something that I was actually interested in, right? So I ended up watching these podcasts in about five or 10 minutes each one. And from there, I took action. I made a video and put an action plan right at the end of the video. And that is something that I'm going to live with for the rest of my life. And he has a book, right? But I'm not going to read that book and I'm not going to buy that book. I've taken the lessons and I'm now going to move on with my life. And don't get me wrong, I'm very grateful to Robert Glover for teaching me these lessons, but it's not as if that makes it so that I owe him my time to read his book and things like that. And so that's what my life looks like right now. And trust me, I've been person A before. Like if, if you see my old videos, you'll see behind me a shelf full of books. And I'll be honest and admit to you right now, I've read probably half of those books. And of that half, maybe a few chapters in some of those books. And the rest I have not even opened. Because after I bought those books, I became more like person B and valued my time. I didn't read the book for the sake of reading a book. I chose the book that I wanted to read and the chapters I wanted to read as well. The chapters that actually brought value to my life. I wanted to use my time wisely and consume only the content that had true value to me. And it's the same with videos on YouTube and podcasts and things like this. You need to get used to that concept of a half finished book, a half finished video, a video where you skip through the thing and didn't watch the whole thing get used to that concept. So now I would like you to paint a picture of your life a year from now. Being person B for a whole year, you valued your time and you did only the things that were absolutely valuable to you and imagine the success you achieve in your goals. It could be money, gains, girls, people skills, grades in school, sports, family, community. Like imagine the speed boost you get from living life like this. Like imagine your entire life like a Mario Kart speed boost where you just go through the track and it automatically takes you in turns and things like that. And you're achieving like way more than you ever expected, right? So let's say you wanted to bench 100 kg, but you end up benching 120. You thought you'd only start talking to girls, but you found the woman of your dreams. You thought you'd only get a B grade, but you got an A star. That is the kind of feeling of success that I want you to focus on. And it really does feel like that. I can tell you now. So the choice is yours. Who do you want to be like? Person A or person B? Do you want to be an NPC, a sheep? Or do you want to be a thinker, a real person of value? The choice is clear for us. So with that being said, I hope this video has helped you today. Thank you so much for watching. Knowledge is power and the power is yours. If you want to see more videos like this, scroll down and click subscribe. Cheers.